politicians, and there is some percentage of people who will go vote for them. And in our internal polling, about six or seven percent goes like that to the Libertarian and Constitution Party. So I'm quite sure that whoever wins is going to do it with less than 50 percent of the vote. You just don't sound like you think those Constitution Party votes are going to come out of your account. What do you think? <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> laughing that you don't think someone who wants to go vote for the Constitution is going to hurt you. Holy cow! This isn't a game, America. And we're in the end phase of the setup. Get your friends and neighbors to go in record-breaking numbers to vote. More in a second. I want to talk to you here for a second on a uh on a, uh, a, a movie that my family watched with me and they hated it. And, and I'm like, come on, kids, it's a great movie. They're like, I hated it, Dad. Do you remember the movie The Sting? I know, it stars Robert Redford and you avoid everything with Robert Redford, I know. But this is, th I thought this was a great movie. It's about a bunch of men who are con men who set up an entire fake gaming facility to pull off a huge rip-off con because somebody has wronged them. They set it up so all the dealers, all the cashiers are in on it. And the mark has no clue. Because if the mark has a clue that they've set them up, if the mark has a clue that they were the ones stealing the money, they're all dead. So when the con goes down and the money finally changes hands, the mark has to have no idea that he's just been had. Well, I think that movie in real life is playing out again. And guess what? Congratulations, you have a starring role. You are the mark. But you don't start with the mark. You start with the setup. The setup has been happening now for quite a while. It was happening, oh, it's, it's been happening for years. But the sting is right around the corner. We have a whole bunch of false fronts built around um, this system that seems like the free market that we know, but it is not. We have Congress set up. It seems to be functioning like it's supposed to, but it's really not. It's, again, a false front. Cass Sunstein is pulling all of the strings. What they do in Congress is becoming more and more irrelevant every single day. Now, you're the mark. Are they trying to just take your money? No. The target here loses their rights and their money, and they lose something else, and it's the one that seems almost seductive, but when it's gone, it'll be the last thing you notice and you'll say, holy cow, that was the key. It was your responsibilities. That's what they take first. These con men want to take away your ability to choose for yourself because they believe they can make better choices for you. You, you might know what you want to eat, but that doesn't matter. You don't know what's best for you. They can tell you what to drive, what you can surf and see and read on the internet, how much money you can earn, how much air is in your tires. They'll take away all of your responsibilities, too. They'll take away those responsibilities like working hard, uh, going through tough times in your life, your responsibility to be charitable, paying your mortgage, paying for school, getting a job, all of it, taking care of grandma and grandpa. And just like in the sting, they're using companies as a front. Fanny and Freddie, GE, please, what do you think is going on with Google right now? The unions like SEIU and AFL-CIO, those are front organizations. They're all fronts. They have roped people in, and now they're about to push us into a progressive nanny state global governance scenario. The con here has already begun to take shape. I want to show you a couple of things Look at the news, and you'll be able to see the con here. First one, Al Gore and George Soros are going to be speaking at Columbia University next week. Al Gore is going to be talking about how investors can leverage uh, their expanding global influence to build robust environmental governance standards. And George Soros will be talking about the sovereign debt problem. Mm, I'm sure they're both going to have a free market solution. Does anybody remember this guy from the town hall meeting in 2009? Watch this. Here's the next piece of the con. Oh, it's such a blessing to see you, Mr. President. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Oh, gracious God, thank you so much. Okay, I've been at the same job, which is McDonald's, for four and a half years because of the fact that I can't find another job. Now, with the fact that I've been there for as long as I've been there, 
Do you have any plan or any idea of making one that has been there for a long time receive any better benefits than what they've already received? He was the mark. The, um, the easy to dupe or the, um, the weakest among us are always the ones who are the first mark. His name is Julio. The president said, yes, he's going to put together health care. This is back a year ago. But really, Julio finally got his answer today. Remember, he worked at McDonald's, and he wanted better benefits. Here's the story today. McDonald's has warned federal regulators that it could drop its health insurance plan for nearly 30,000 workers unless regulators waive a new requirement of the U.S. health overhaul. Yes, Julio, here's your answer. You will have it his way. President Obama's mandates and standards designed right into the health care bill shows that large employers like McDonald's are doing the math and they're finding they can't meet the standards and therefore they're forced to drop the people that they were covering, which they will receive penalties for, but he will have to go into the federal health care system. These are part-time workers who are getting small plans. They're called mini-med plans. But it was how they were all had because now they have nothing. 1.4 million people across the country are affected by this. 1.4 million people have now go are going to have their health care dropped because of we're trying to get the poor on health care. But don't worry. Progressives will be there to save the day because they already are. You see, they start with the solution. They know what's best. And then they create the problem or exploit the problem intentionally. So that way, you eventually, like Julio, go to them and beg for the solution because the big bad McDonald's has just taken away your health care. That's what they do. Artificially create a problem to run in and save the day with the solution that they wanted in the first place. The president is responsible for this. But he'll be the knight in shining armor and he'll sweep everyone into government health care because remember, that was his goal. His words. I happen to be a proponent of a single-payer universal health care plan. single-payer health care plan, universal health care plan. And that's what I'd like to see. But as all of you know, we may not get there immediately. We may not get there immediately. You, you were set up. You were the mark. And the sting is about to go down. Back in a minute. I've been talking to you all week about the One Nation rally this Saturday. Are your members doing this because they have to or they want to? My members are doing this for both reasons. They have to and they want to. They're ready for a fight. That, that, that should make you a little, that should wake you up a little bit, America. Maybe drive you to your knees. I want you to watch because the sting is not happening yet, but the con is really winding up. This weekend is important because remember, you are the mark. If you're on the fence or you're not really sure what's really happening in your country, you better pick up the pace. But start with listening to your gut. You know something's not right. If you already know that you're being set up and you're going to be shoved into some anti-colonialist, Marxist, or global governance system, I don't know what it's going to look like in the end, you need to wake others up. You need to take the 40-day and 40-night challenge. It is a blueprint for national survival. You have to do that. And here's what really, in a nutshell, it is. Clean out your own life. Be peaceful. Be strong. Know what is true. Tough times are coming. You need to be a shelter for others. It feels to me as though the seasons are about to change. Remember what these activists are good at. These activists are, are great at one thing. Dividing, disrupting, agitating. They've been good at it. They've been doing it since the 1960s. And this is their shot. They have been waiting and building since the 1960s. Well, if you've just been agitating and everything, well, you're not good at ruling. And you've seen that, right? We're onto them. We know who they are. We know th th this is a nightmare. But they're about to go back to agitating. Because once they lose control of the house, they have to. That's what they're good at. You must overwhelm them in numbers. Get out and vote this November. Get someone else to vote. I don't care how they vote, just get them to vote. 
Get off your couch. Get your neighbors off your couch. Be proactive. You just make sure. Are you registered to vote yet? Register to vote. Make sure people in your neighborhood are registered to vote. Get them out in droves and then stand peacefully arm in arm. Because I fear the trouble is just about to begin and it will only get worse. The sting, I believe, happens maybe after January. If I'm right, there's not going to be a lot of people in Washington that will offer peaceful leadership and our streets will not be peaceful they will start protesting and agitating again. The peaceful leadership role, unfortunately, I believe, will fall on your shoulders. Be ready to accept that challenge. Has anyone wondered why the media didn't wildly cover the president's huge political rally on the campus of the University of Wisconsin-Madison this week? I mean, it was big. And why did he do it there? I mean, it seemed like the perfect setup for mainstream media. Barack Obama with Russ Feingold in Wisconsin, the birthplace of American progressivism. It's where the wizard, you remember him, the wizard of progressive thought, the founding member of Crime, Inc., Joel Rogers, hails. That's his campus. Sounds like progressive heaven. And the lead? Oh, it's a lead feel-good story on every network. Look at the kids. They love Obama, and the numbers are back. By the way, Joel Rogers, he started the New Party, which later split off into the Working Families Party, which is endorsing the One Nation Working Together rally. But who's funding it? Who's funding this? Because I remember being asked that over and over and over again for, for months. Who funds 828? The people did. Well, well, who's funding it? And who's behind the message of the rally? Are you ready? This is worth the wait. Who else? The Tides Foundation. The Tides. What's possible? They also fund Joel Rogers' Apollo Alliance project on his uh, center in Wisconsin strategy. And the rally's message is courtesy of Phaedra Ellis Lampkins, the CEO of Green for All, the group jo Van Jones co-founded. She also sits on the board of Emerald Cities, the collaborative, the group, you know, that the wizard Joel Rogers created to push unions into the green movement. It is such a cozy, nicely connected little group here, isn't it? It really is one nation. The question is, who are you? Who are we? Are you one nation working together with the communists, the radicals, the revolutionaries that want to fundamentally transform America? Or are you these people? Are you these people? One nation who came together. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Decide. Last couple of days, we have told you to understand the past so we can understand the future. Tomorrow, an hour you must not miss what life will look like in America in 2025 if we don't change course. Will you recognize the country and what are you going to do about it? Knowledge is power. Tomorrow is a powerful episode. Don't miss it. DVR it. Bring your kids and show it. From New York, good night, America.